today, um, in many of our, of our cars, as you well know, you, you don't really have to do much in order to open your car and to start, start your car. It's sufficient that your key is somewhere upon you, and so you can approach the car, and the car will automatically unlock. And as you sit in the car, the car will notice that you are in the car and will allow you to get to start the car. So uh, about 10 years, almost 10 years ago, I, uh, I bought such a car and I started wondering whether I could, uh, I could somehow hack into this car based on this notion of proximity. And so with a group of my, of my students and collaborators, uh, we came up with a, with a relay attack. And this was a, as an attack by, by which we could essentially relay signals between the car and the key, and this key might be uh, sitting in your, in your house and the car might be parked outside of your house. And by relaying these signals, we were able to shorten the distance that the car and the key were measuring and therefore open, open all these cars. Now, this was, this was a very fun experience because um, stealing things uh, legally, I mean, can really be fun. Probably legally as well, but legally it was a lot of fun for us. So, um, and a lot of years have passed and a lot of uh, car manufacturers tried to fix this problem. All of them were affected back then and the last time that we checked, all of them are affected now. And these, these attacks are, are still happening actually today in practice. So this is a video from last year where a, a bunch of thieves, they're not actually wearing white, white robes. They're, this was just edited in order to protect their identities, I guess. They are, they are walking around carrying two devices, as you can see. One of these devices is exciting the key that's in the, that's in the house, and the other one is actually uh, standing next to, the, next to the car, relaying the signals. Later on in this way, they, they, they will enter the car and they will drive, drive away. Now, um, in order to solve these kind of problems, what we actually need, and this, is what, this was one of our motivations, is we need to make sure that we can securely measure a distance between a key and the car. And this might seem somewhat trivial, right? I mean, humans are pretty good at estimating distances, but how do wireless devices do this? And this is not only a problem in, in cars, this can be a problem in your home. If you want homes that can recognize that you are close because you're wearing your mobile phone and just open the doors for you, well, you need proximity. The same applies to your to your laptop. As you approach your laptop, maybe wearing a, a dongle or, or, a, or a phone, your laptop should automatically unlock. The same is valid for, for payments. However, this is not only restricted to human interaction, this, is also this also applies to many other online experiences. I would really like to know who is connecting to my server and from where, and I want to verify the location from which they are connecting. So, Cloud providers would like to do that, and also users would like to know who is connecting to my system. It's like who is entering my home in some way, or who is knocking on the door. And where are they? And this is one of the main attributes that you would like to know. And maybe more, more importantly today, in the, in the Internet of Things era, in all of our hospitals, in all, in all of our homes, in all of our industrial automation uh, centers, we are going to have many wireless devices that will be deployed everywhere, many, many small ubiquitous devices, and they will all want to know where they are. And they will also, we, we would also need to know where they are securely. So essentially, if you, if you want to frame this problem, you would talk about the need to know where other objects and people are, and also the need to know where you are. So the need to verify and to, and to have some awareness of your own location. And you want to do it clearly, securely. So clearly, you know, all of us are, are familiar with, with GPS. And uh, if you're outdoors, GPS will, might help you. And you might rely on GPS to know where you are. And so this shows, shows a mobile phone, as you can see. Uh, and this mobile phone indicates a location in Berlin. Except that this mobile phone is actually not in Berlin. This mobile phone is in Zurich, and what we did is we, we took a device that you see in the upper right corner of, uh, of, this, of this image, and we injected wireless signals into the area where this phone was, and this phone, which was actually in Zurich, showed a location in Berlin. 
Now imagine, so this might not be such a big problem because you might have some awareness of where you are, but imagine all these self-driving cars, self-driving drones, autonomous systems, thinking that they are actually elsewhere. Would that make you comfortable? Would it make you comfortable knowing that for less than 1,000 Swiss francs and a couple of uh, software downloads, any kid on the planet could do the same? Does this make you feel safe about sitting in an autonomous vehicle that relies on this kind of sensing for, uh, for navigation? I'm not sure. You know, maybe you are happy with that. Maybe you can close your eyes or ears to that kind of threat. But given that I live in a very adversarial world, right, we think about these problems all the time, I can't really ignore it. And we are not the only ones that do these kind of hacks. As you can see, researchers are spoofing into, into military drones. Uh, Iranians claim that they, that, they that they hijacked a US drone by GPS spoofing. And there, there are clear indications that we need to augment GPS or we need to build new systems to replace GPS as well. So until now, we actually don't have a fully secure distance measurement or positioning system. That kind of thing doesn't exist. Whatever you use today to estimate location or distance is not actually secure. So we decided to build one at ETH, right? This makes sense. You know, if something's broken, we need to, we need to fix it. And we did it. We built a, a new radio. It's an integrated circuit, so it's a new chip that is low power and it's provably secure. It's precise and fast. And one of these, so one of the models of these chips next year will be securing some of your cars. Uh, depending on the model, you can come come to me later on. I'll tell you, I'll give you a hint what you should buy. <laughs> and this is just a small demo of how how such a such a system works. So essentially, you have two devices, and these two devices are exchanging messages, and they are measuring round trip time of flight in order to determine their mutual distance. And you can imagine this this these signals are traveling at the speed of light. So this means that you have to measure to, to, the, uh, to the resolution of less than nanoseconds in order to have sufficient precision. What are the challenges here? Well, as you can see here, these are the kinds of signals that we have to deal with. So they are very, very narrow, one, nano, one to two nanosecond wide signals in the time domain, very, very wide band signals. So the challenges are actually really operating at that speed and precisely detecting, detecting the, um, the time of arrival. On top of that, we have to worry about signals reflecting from all kinds of uh, obstacles, non-line-of-sight non uh, scenarios, and so forth. We need to apply some uh, clever crypto and, uh, and, and uh, modulations in order to make sure that our system is truly secure, that it enables long range, and that only if the attacker transmits faster than the speed of light, only under that condition, this attacker can violate our system. So no matter how fast you, you think you can go, faster than the speed of light still remains infeasible. Of course, we can go, we can measure this to very long ranges, indoors, outdoors, and based on this distance secure distance measurement system, we can build actually a secure positioning system that guarantees that it cannot be spoofed. So something that's actually truly secure. So it's almost like throwing a glove here, right, saying this cannot be hacked, but I, we have really firm proofs, physical properties that guarantee that this cannot be hacked. So a challenge here that we are facing now in the future, because this project is, is still not, not finished, is, is similar to building a new cellular network. It's a terrestrial network of stations that will enable secure positioning, that will enable all these autonomous, autonomous vehicles to actually drive uh, by knowing their, their position that cannot be spoofed. And that's our long-term goal. But of course, you know, when we are talking about detecting proximity and detecting where you are in a certain environment, radio signals are not the only sensing modality. We, we have seen a talk today already talking about vision, 
talking about using vision or, or other types of sensing modalities in order to, to determine where you are. In another set of projects, we are actually using sound. So until such small chips are deployed in the, in the wild, we need, we need to see what kind of other sensing modalities are already available out there so that we can actually detect proximity. And in those kind of projects, we are using recordings of sound. You, you have seen Alexa and similar systems. Recording of sounds by your mobile phone and by your, by your laptop in order to figure out if you're actually close to your, to your device in order to prevent online, uh, online frauds, in order to authenticate the user to an online service. And of course, this can be deployed across many different, different devices, and that's what we are currently, currently deploying and, and testing with, with, with different users. So we can actually secure not only IoT systems, but online authentication with the notion of, of proximity and secure location. So my final message is essentially it's time to de-virtualize, right? I mean, internet has, has taught us that everything is a virtual resource somewhere out there and that we shouldn't really care where things are because everything can be reached somehow and all these resources sit somewhere. But I don't think this, this necessarily holds anymore. I don't think this is enough. I think what we need is we need to get physical again. I want to know where from is someone connecting. I want to know where the IoT devices in my space are. And I need to know that securely. So if we do this, we can secure existing systems and we can also enable a deployment of new systems that rely on position and, and distance information.